Center for the Ethiopian Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. students. Welcome to today's lesson on the use of bacteria in sewage treatment. In our last lesson, we looked at how bacteria are used in the production of antibiotics. We briefly studied the discovery of antibiotics. We took a closer look at the manufacturing process of antibiotics, focusing on fermentation. As we have learned in this unit so far, bacteria play an important role in many areas of environment and industry. Today, we will be focusing on the industrial use of bacteria within the field of sewage treatment. Let us begin the lesson, students. Human activity generates a large volume of sewage and wastewater that requires treatment before being released back into the environment. Sewage and wastewater usually contain excessive amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and metal compounds, as well as organic pollutants that would contaminate the environment. Also, non-biodegradable chemical wastes and harmful microorganisms are often found in untreated sewage. The chemical and biological waste in sewage and water must be broken down before it can be deposited into the soil or environment. This breakdown can effectively be controlled by managing the sewage and wastewater and by encouraging microorganisms to digest the organic matter. All sewage treatment relies on the action of microorganisms to oxidize the organic material present. There are two main methods of using microorganisms to manage sewage treatment, the percolating filter method and the activated sludge method. We will look at both methods beginning with the percolating filter method. The percolating filter method is a relatively simple and inexpensive method. It is an aerobic application in which the sewage is distributed by a revolving sprinkler suspended over a bed of filtration material. In this method, sewage is strained to remove large pieces of debris. 
As you can see in the diagram of the percolating filter tank, the sewage is sprayed over stones, which are covered in microorganisms. The sewage trickles through the stones and is filtered. The microorganisms digest the organic material. By the time the sewage reaches the bottom of the bed of stones, the polluting organic material has been removed. The sewage may need to recirculate through the percolating filter method more than once to ensure the organic material has been sufficiently filtered. Let us do an activity regarding what we just studied. Students, list two advantages and two disadvantages to the percolating filter method. Share your answer with a classmate. Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Hello, teacher. Hello again, students. I am sure everyone had quite a few interesting ideas. You may have said that some advantages of the percolating filter method are that it is simple and inexpensive. You may have said that the disadvantages are that the sewage may have to be filtered more than once to ensure that the organic materials have been removed. Also, you may have said that the buildup of organic material that was removed by the microorganisms would remain on the stones. This would decrease the efficiency of the microorganisms' ability to remove more organic material. This means that the stones have to be replaced to make the method more efficient. You may have come up with different answers. At the end of this lesson, please review them with teacher. Let us move on to discuss the second method of using bacteria in sewage treatment, the activated sludge method. The activated sludge method is a widely used aerobic method to filter sewage. Similar to the percolating filter method, sewage is strained in a settlement tank. The sewage is then pumped into treatment tanks where activated sludge is added. Activated sludge is the runoff from a previous treatment. It is rich in microorganisms, which is why it is reused. In addition to activated sludge, oxygen is also added to the sewage. Once the sewage is oxygenated, the microorganisms from the activated sludge oxidize the organic material. The sludge and microbial material that is created in this process is removed in a settling tank. A portion of the settled sludge is recycled and reused as activated sludge in new tanks. Let us do an activity to review what we have just learned. Students, what are the two materials in the activated sludge method that are added to the sludge to stimulate the process and control the level of treatment obtained? Once you determine the materials, describe how they are used in the process. Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. I hope everyone was able to answer the question. If you said that oxygen and activated sludge are added to stimulate and control the process, then you are correct. As oxygen is added to the sewage, it facilitates the growth of the microorganisms that work to break down the organic material within the sewage. The activated sludge is the byproduct of the activated sludge method that is recycled and used again. It is rich in microorganisms that will effectively break down the organic material in the sewage. Well done, students. By controlling the amounts of air and sludge added to the mixture, varieties of sewage can be treated effectively. We have reached the end of our lesson. Today, we learned how bacteria are used in sewage treatments. We learned about the percolating filter method and the activated sludge method. I hope you found this lesson interesting. Until next time, thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.